Simon Clark. I'm the current secretary of the CCG, that's the Catfish Conservation Group, and I'd like to welcome you to our first ever video on catfish and catfishing. When we talk about catfish, we actually mean the European catfish, the Latin name of which is Silurus glanis. It is found throughout Europe and has been in Britain since the late 1800s when it was introduced by the Duke of Bedford to the Woburn Lakes. Since that time, it spread and is now found in over 80 waters around Britain. Because of the relative scarcity of catfish, many anglers haven't even seen one. So what we plan to do in this video is to show you both the fish and how to actually fish for it. During the video, we'll be visiting three locations in order to try and catch catfish. We'll be starting here at Kevin Maddox Lake, Withy Pool in Bedfordshire. We'll be then moving to our own CC in Ulster, Warwickshire, called Adams Pool, and we'll be finishing at Leisure Sports Horton Fishery in West Middlesex. Before we start fishing, I'd just like to take a few minutes to tell you about the CCG, or the Catfish Conservation Group, to give it its full title. The Catfish Conservation Group was formed in 1984, and its aims are to gather information about catfish and to make that available to water authorities, clubs, and to anglers to make sure that catfish don't get abused. Indeed, in the CCG, we have considerable scientific evidence which actually proves that catfish are beneficial within fisheries rather than just being a voracious predator, which is how they're sometimes wrongly described. The CCG is made up of both anglers interested in fishing for whales and also non-anglers who are interested in the species itself. The group is coping currently with a huge upsurge in demand for catfish in order to be stocked into fisheries because the interest is so great in this fish as a sporting quarry. One of the benefits of membership of the Catfish Conservation Group is that we produce this high quality magazine, Whiskers. We also produce newsletters, arrange fish-ins and provide a wealth of information about the species and fishing for catfish themselves to the membership. We also have our own lake, the country's first specialist catfish water in the Midlands, which is accessible to members only. We'll be visiting Adams Pool later, but let's start by looking at the catfish in a little bit more detail. And here we have him, Silurus glanis, the European Wells catfish. Surrounding the large capacious mouth are these small Velcro-like needle teeth. At the back of the throat are the crushing plates. This fish is regurgitating last night's meal. On the top jaw, he has two long whiskers, and on the bottom are four shorter ones, all used for locating food. The small, piggy eye indicates the cat is predominantly a nocturnal feeder. Moving down the long, powerful flank to the tail, we see he has a small and rounded caudal fin. The insignificant dorsal fin has little use. Turning the fish over, we can see a small pointed flap of skin behind the vent. This indicates that this fish is a male, as does the thick bony ridge at the front edge of the pectoral fins. You may occasionally come across this chap, a North American channel catfish, Ictalurus punctatus, similar in some ways to the wells, but easily distinguished. It's also seen in an albino form. As you can see, it has a smaller mouth and the top jaw overhangs the lower. It also has two extra barbules just behind its nostrils. This makes a total of eight whiskers. The eyes are large. It has a thick body and a larger dorsal fin. 
The first ray is a pointed spine, which has a poisonous gland at the base. Care must be taken when handling. These spines can also be found on the pectoral fins. The shorter body ends with a sharply forked tail. Perhaps the biggest difference of all is the fatty adipose fin. Rarely encountered by anglers, this species is more commonly found in ornamental garden ponds. The black bullhead, Ictalurus melas, is thankfully rare in Britain, but widely found on the continent. It is a short and squat fish with a rounded tail. The colour can vary from green to black. Rarely growing larger than a pound, its voracious appetite make this fish a pest. It should never be introduced into the wild in the UK. Now Kevin and I are going to run through some of the tackle that we would recommend for using for catfishing. To start with, really strong carp tackle is quite adequate. Rods of approximately two to two and a half pound test curve through action is recommended. And for reels, any good strong reel um, here's the Shimano bait runner, which is quite useful, which has the bait running action, which can be used for live baiting. Quite a good reel, that one. And then coming on, strong line. If the water is clear and there are no snags, then line of approximately eight to nine pounds would, would be quite adequate. But if there are snags in the water, go heavier. I use up to 15 pounds on occasions. For hook link, there's a Chryston Quicksilver, which is a good uh, hook link, or Dacron or fly line backing. But again, don't go too light, at least 10 to 12 pound breaking strain. Coming on, hooks do need to be strong. Partridge have just brought out this new catfish hook, which is very good, or there's the Z2 hook, which we'd also recommend. One point with hooks, be very, very careful to make sure that the hooks are sharp. Use a sharpening stone to make sure that uh, the tips have not been burred over at all. You can also use polystyrene balls, as we'll talk about later, for use on the line to buoy up live baits from the bottom. Coming on, when you've actually hooked the catfish, you really want a good sized landing net. Here's one with 42 inch arms, a good size weighing sling and really for England, with a chance of fish over 30 pounds, here are some scales, 56 pound maximum, just in case you get that outsized fish. Strong forceps for unhooking, because a hook hole can be quite firm in the catfish's quite tough mouth. And lastly, if you do need to retain the fish, then rather than using a carp sack, which the catfish can sometimes get the netting caught in their mouths, we'd recommend the catfish tubes which are available on the market. These can be stretched out into the margins, the catfish can lay in them, and the oxygen exchange is better than the sack. But be sure to follow the guidelines of any fish retention, that is to retain the fish for the minimum amount of time and make sure that where you have laid them out, that the water is deep enough and cool enough to allow the fish not to get too stressed and make sure that you check the fish regularly to make sure that it's not coming to any harm. Following on from Simon, I'm going to briefly run through the tackle needed for fishing abroad as there's so much interest in this now. Start off with the hooks and leads. Hooks, you don't really want to use the same as what you're using in the UK. You want very strong, normally, the best is stainless steel, size, uh, 1.0 up to about 12.0. The importance of these hooks is that they must be very, very strong. There's some partridge ones there. As we're normally fishing rivers abroad, you need heavy leads, four, five, six, even up to eight ounces, to hold the flow of the river and also the use of a live bait. So very heavy leads there. Poly balls, like we use in the UK, but but quite a bit bigger. That's a typical size if you're using a fish of say six, seven inches, just to keep it up off the bottom and working all the time. A lot of fish abroad, a lot of catfish are caught on spinners and spoons. There's a selection there. 
some UK anglers have tried and not caught much on them at the moment, but we've seen the Continentals catching on them, so it's worth taking a selection. When you're a bit bored in the daytime, sometimes it's worth going and have a little spin. Um, because you're fishing rivers, it's important that you're using buzzers, which have got a good angle here so that your rod is not pulled off the rest when you get a take, um, in addition to the pull on the rod from the flow of the, of the river. So a good angle there for the rod. For the back rod rests, I find the fox rod lock is ideal. Clamp the rod in that, again because the pull of a fish can be quite violent and you might have your bait runner screwed up quite tight because of the flow of the river. Uh, for bank fishing, the rods that you're using in, in the UK are fine normally. Um, it wouldn't hurt to go slightly stiffer on the test curves, two and a half to three. Um, normally on the bank, 11 or even up to 12 foot, but 11 foot is nice. If you're boat fishing, then um, again, you can get away with the bank rods, but if you're doing a lot of boat fishing, I find a proper boat rod is ideal. Not an upside rod, just an ordinary boat rod that's got a compound taper through action. This is one of my favourites, Shimano Twin Power Boat Rod, 7 foot 6 long, 30 pound line test. Load the lines, um, quite heavy lines, load the reels with 26 pound seal cast, I do, but uh, anything between 20 and 30 pound. The fish are not line shy, many of them have never been caught before. This is seal cast, relatively expensive line, very reliable. Um, other bits and pieces you'll need are gloves mainly for uh, what we call the waller grip, for removing the fish from the water because it's too big for the landing net, or you might be out in the boat without a landing net. Uh, briefly what you do is you just put your thumb into the catfish's mouth and get hold of the jaw from underneath using the side of your forefinger. Difficult to describe, but just get your thumb in there and get hold of that bottom jaw firmly and tightly, and then you can hold the fish and pull it out of the water. And uh, you can do it with no gloves, but obviously the, the small teeth at the front of the catfish's mouth can make your finger a little bit sore. Scales. The 56s that you use in England won't be good enough. These are 220 pound scales. The chances are if you catch a fish on a river in France or Spain or Germany, it's going to be good chance it's going to be over 56. So take scales big enough, otherwise you could come back disappointed because you couldn't weigh your fish. Sling, same type of sling as what Simon's shown, but much bigger. You've got to be capable of holding a 100 pound fish. When we're boat fishing, we normally take an echo sounder. Um, not so much for finding fish, but for f uh, the actual features of the river and normally a feature near the bank, perhaps the first shelf. Um, it might only be 20 yards out, 15 yards out. If you can find that shelf or, or um, any uh, variations in depth, could be a good catfish spot. So echo sound is excellent for that. And also, you can find in the middle of some of these rivers, deep holes. And that's often where catfish lay up, good place to fish. So an echo sounder is useful. I think we've covered more or less everything there that we need to. Um, just the landing net, we need a huge landing net for these fish. And as you can see, you want one big enough to hold a man. <laughs> and now let's just take a brief look at the size of catfish you're likely to encounter abroad.
Thanks, Kevin. Uh, now I think we perhaps ought to uh, try out some catfishing. We're going to have a go on Kevin's own lake here at Withy Pool and see if we can catch some fish for you. But first, Keith is going to give us some information on fish baits. Right, we've seen the fishing tackle. Now let's have a look at some of the more popular baits for catfish. Basically, they'll eat anything. Total scavengers. These are some of the best baits. Freshwater mussels, used hull, the foot mounted on a large hook, obviously a totally natural bait, as are dead baits. Small roach, could be any species, but usually small. Fish steaks, these are pike. Eel sections, squid, either whole calamari or sections of large squid. Sprats, sardines, mackerel. Any of the oily fish baits, either used whole or cut into sections. Cockles. Basically, these are particle type baits. Very, very good for catfish, but they can attract other species as well. Moving on to the meatier baits, raw liver, black pudding, bacon grill luncheon meat. Any of those type baits will all catch catfish. Here we have a crayfish. All catfish eat crayfish wherever they're found naturally. Very, very staple part of the catfish's diet. However, presenting one of these in a natural manner to catch a catfish is very difficult. If you're new to catfishing, don't be confused by the sparse array of baits. Stick to the tried and tested ones. Squid, dead baits, mussels, and good old liver. As an alternative to these baits, you could try making your own, paste baits and boilies. If you do, stick to the, basically the fish and meat flavours. Cat food always makes up into a nice paste, particularly with a base mix. Flavours, try them, they'll all work to some degree. Pastes can be made up with liquidised liver, beef burgers, trout pellets. Mix them all together, make a lovely bait. If you have a problem with nuisance fish, make them up into boilies, preferably large. Today, I'm going to use something totally different. Octopus, but not a whole one. In their natural environment, catfish will prey on live fish as a food source, but would probably prefer less active prey, like swan mussels, crayfish, and caddis. In clear water like this, they are less active and used up, as you can see. Under cover, heads up and tails down. Here you can see one disturbed from its resting place. That underwater sequence was filmed on Kevin's larger lake, but we're fishing the smaller lake, which has much more coloured water, with a better chance of catching fish during the day. We fished two sessions, and in fact, we were into fish very quickly. Out. Nearly all the catfish that you catch are caught just in the corner of the mouth there, just a little patch of skin. For some reason, 
most of the hooks tend to catch in here, right in here. Occasionally you will find that catfish, you lose catfish quite soon after hooking them. And we think they're prob that's probably due to the hooks maybe bouncing out of these teeth. And there's certainly a lot of hard bony mouth there. You invariably do find that it's hooked in the side of the mouth. It's normally a firm hook hold. Do you see? It's lovely. Little catfish, I suppose it must be about just probably about three and a half or four pounds, I would have thought. It's an absolute beauty. Very light due to the muddy colour of the lake. Beautiful fish. A lot of people call them very ugly. But certainly beautiful to me. I like the mottled colour. The colour on catfish can vary extraordinarily. In clear water, the top of this fish would be almost jet black with a very pale belly. Right through to in the sandiest coloured water, you'd almost think it was an albino. It would just be a very constant sandy colour. So you've got this lovely mottling down the fish. So we certainly had a little bit of a nibble at it there. Probably a bite from another catfish, I would guess. That's Lovely fish, it's long anal fin. Yeah. Lovely fish. Soon after, Ron was playing another fish. This was a fish of almost identical size. Both of these catfish were raised in Kevin's own fish house. Here at Withy Paul, I like to raise some of the small catfish that are born in the main lake that don't have much chance of survival. What we got here in this old shed is three different systems. I'll just run through how they're organized. The lower trough, which holds two or three hundred gallons of water. Submersible pump, which pumps water to two places. A large bacterial filter. The water passes through that, it removes solids, etc. And then runs back into the main trough. Also, the water is pumped through an ultraviolet unit, ensuring good water quality. In initially, the water drops into these upper tanks where the baby catfish are held and then out into the lower trough again and this water is recirculating several times an hour in the winter time I use tubular type thermostatically controlled water heaters which keep the temperature approximately 60 degrees enough to ensure good growth rates in the summer time I actually switch them off obviously uh, if I had the water at 70 degrees all of the time I could achieve better growth rates but then I would have the disadvantages of having to have much higher water quality and I would have to spend a lot more time in the fish house. But I'm very happy with them switched off in the summer and on in the winter. I'll just show you some of the catfish we got here in this top trough, if I can catch one. Right. These are about two inches when they were put in the system. I'll see if I can hold one. They're not the easiest fish to hold when they're this size. So you can see it properly. Uh, they're about a year old. And this one's about nine, ten inches. You can see him there. Lovely small fish. Now hopefully next year that'll be three or four pound in weight. And that can get moved on to other water. Other waters in the UK. So that is my attempt at trying to increase the population of catfish throughout the country. We'll just pop him back in. And that's about it. This is one of the fish we caught earlier, and I'm going to tag it now. 
We have tagged fish in both the main lake at Withy and the small lake. It weighs three pound 12. We've recorded that already. So all we've got to do now is put a tag in. These are quad tags, which are used in pigeons. And it's just a matter of clamping that on. I've got to put it somewhere decent. And one of the best places I've found is just about here on the tail. And it's just a simple matter of squeezing it like that. And there's the tag. Green 871, Keith. You can make a note of that. And you can see that's the fish didn't even flinch then. It hasn't felt nothing. And then we can just study how much it grows or doesn't grow over the next few years. We've measured it as well. So I think we'll pop him back now into the small lake. In fact, I'll take it down in the unhooking mat. We don't want to drop the fish. These unhooking mats are really useful when you're catfishing. I can just slip him in off of the, the mat. There he goes. Lovely. Back on Little Withy for our second session, where unfortunately, on this occasion, Ron couldn't join us.
what up, boy? Later on, Kevin was into the final fish of the session. All right, mate. Yeah. I don't think it's a very big one, but uh, we'll see. Too much pressure, there's no point in rushing them here. Well, it's coming now a bit. Got it? Lovely. Oh, if you look there, that's interesting on the fish here. There's a bite mark from another cat there. That's not uncommon in this water because there's a lot of cats in here. And when they bump into each other at night, I think especially, they tend to just grab at each other. There we are. Probably about three and a half, I would say. Might be a touch more. Right, I think I'll just put Cotton in the sack for a minute and uh, we'll get some pictures of him, I think some stills. Well as you can see we've had a very good day, we've kept three fish back here for you to have a look at, from three to five pounds and uh, even fish of this size can give you a very very good fight. Really this is the future of English cat fishing, fish of this size and perhaps a little bit bigger. I think we'll just lay them down for you to have a final look at before we return them and what wonderful fish they are look at those well we've had a really good couple of days here and managed to catch quite a number of catfish to show you now come and join us as we go to Adams Pool the CCG's own fishery which is in the Midlands And now we've come to the Catfish Conservation Group's own lake here at Ulster in Warwickshire and I'm here today talking to Ron Griffiths, the head bailiff. Ron, can you tell us a bit about the water? It's a small reservoir which the farmer obviously uses for irrigation of his land. Mm. It was stocked with um, carp, roach, rudd, crucian carp by Seven Trent mm. as a fishery and obviously we stocked it two years ago with catfish. And how many and what size catfish have we stocked? There's 54 catfish in here. We stocked them from three pounds to 10 pound eight. And can you tell us a little bit about the growth rate since the fish have been introduced? The growth rate has been very encouraging. Uh, some of the catfish are actually putting on three pound in weight in a year. Oh, the growth rates are certainly very encouraging, Ron. How large do the fish go in the lake? At the moment, the largest uh, caught is actually 13 pound one. Mm. But it looks, with the recent restocking as well, it looks as though we're going to be having catfish to an excess of £15 this year. That's certainly very good. And how is the fishery actually controlled, Ron? It's available only to Catfish Conservation Group members, either on a syndicate basis or on day tickets. Ron, you mentioned earlier that the catfish were stocked about two years ago. I know you need certain permissions in order to stock catfish into waters. Could you just tell us what those are? Yes, you need uh, MAF permission on a ma MAF application form which is WC AF2 and the fee we actually paid for it was actually £30 but there may be an increase since then. Mm. You also need the NRA approval as well which is on form WCR13. Okay Ron, what do you think would constitute a successful application? It must be a totally landlocked water and the fish must be uh, disease free with a health certification from the NRA. And now we're going to go and do some.
why don't you come along and hopefully we can give you a few tips. Right, well I've got my rod set up, so what I'm going to do is just briefly explain to you what basic methods I'm using. So first of all, on this rod here, the left hand rod, this is a one and a half pound test curve compound taper fiberglass rod, which I'm going to use for really close in work, in order that uh, any lunges from any fish are compensated by the complete through action for the rod. And the bait is just going to be uh, a simple free line setup, no leads on the line at all and for bait I'm just going to use a piece of liver which I just nick through the end so I've got the piece of liver there and I've just nicked through the end of it point of the hook is clear, you've got to be very careful with baits not to mask the hook point otherwise you can end up hooking, hook, re-hooking back into your bait instead of hooking into the catfish and I'm just going to flick that just to the very edge, no more than three quarters of a rod length out to the edge of some, just some marginal algae. Just let it drift back, right into the margins. That's no more than four foot deep. And I'm just gonna set that on the buzzers there, just very lightly. And I'll just explain my bobbin setup very simple, very light. Just open the bail arm and just use a very light bobbin. I use an old wine cork bottle top which I cut out with a Stanley knife and I just you know, no more and rest it on there. And the reason for that is when I get a run, catfish are very sensitive to any resistance so I want very little resistance so when the line gets pulled it's just going to drop off there and the line can run away quite free. So that's the first setup. Just pop that back on there. Just tighten up there. Very close detail, isn't too important, as long as it's just resting there and can run freely. Now the second setup, I've got a slightly more powerful rod. This is a fiberglass two pound compound taper again rod for a through action really is recommended for catfish rods again just a free line because I'm fish, fishing close in as well this time I'm going to try a little bit of a different bait it's actually a small section of pike flesh which is very very smelly and quite a distinctive smell and can be uh, quite successful again I've nicked it through the end being careful that the point is free, is not going to get masked. And again, I'm going to do m no more than to flick this just out to the edge, just to the edge, a little bit further along. There we go. And again, I'm just going to let that swing back in till it's right on the edge of this sort of algae type scum that's sitting on the surface. Doesn't matter if the line lows over there a little bit because it's going to fall clear when I get a run. Again, same setup. Just pop the rod down there. And then, again, with this very light drop off bobbin, just going to pop it on there. And that's clear running. Sit back. And now I'm going to wait. The actual chances of me catching this afternoon while the sun is fairly high are not too good. There are possibilities, especially in coloured water, where the cats do feed quite a bit in the day. But here, where the water is fairly clear, the chances, I find, are much better at night. And also, one tip that I could offer is the fact that uh, me and a lot of my friends have better catch rates at, n at nights during the week as opposed to the weekends when there tend to be more anglers and more disturbance. The quieter midweek nights do, te do tend to produce better catch rates. 
It does mean that you're occasionally going to go into work hide, but if the catch rates are better, then I think it's worth it once in a while. So I'm going to sit here for the afternoon with some optimism, although as soon as the sun goes down, I'll be ready and hoping for some action. So let's see how it goes. We've now come round the lake to Keith swim. Can you tell me what methods you're using today? Yeah, sure, Simon. Basically, like most of my fishing, it's done at close range in uh, the margin. Well, I'm using a free line rig, and that's what I've got on today. The right hand rod is a bunch of worms which is cast out just underneath the trees there, or as close as I can get. Unfortunately, I'm having a lot of trouble with carp picking those up, so I might have to change that a little bit later. And the one on the left, I want to fish in deeper water, and I'm just about to cast that out, so I'll show you how I've been doing it. Right, let's see what we can do. Now, the rig, as you can see, is as basic as it comes. One hook, one length of hook link, that's actually fly uh, line backing, breaking strain of about 30 pounds. One good, strong Barclay swivel, that's it. Now, the hook I like to use for the bait I'm using, which is Sprat, is a Partridge Z2, with a very wide gape on it. Needs a bit of sharpening, which is nice. And we'll just hang the bait onto the hook through the eyes. Straight through the eye sockets, out the other side. We've got two of those. There's a nice bait, easily hanging, plenty of hook there. And the catfish can't resist that. Now, because I want to get the bait a bit further out than I can cast with a free line, we're going to tie this disposable weight, it's a piece of concrete with a hole in it, tied up with a piece of PVA string. And that will dissolve in the water in about five minutes or so, leaving everything nice and tight on the bottom, exactly where I want it. Hello. Now, we don't need anything special there, just a couple of quick granny knots. And there we are, that's it. All ready for casting. Just before you cast, Keith, I've seen you throwing in some loose offerings earlier on. Can you give us your views on pre-baiting? Yes, Simon. First of all, I think it's important to differentiate between ground baiting and pre-baiting. Pre-baiting is carried out during the close season or over a period of time before you actually fish. Now, that's important. Ground bait is just there on the night as a, as a free offering, like you put boilies out for carp, a few around your hook bait. It's the same sort of thing. But with pre-baiting, you're trying to attract fish to an area of the lake, hopefully the swim that you're in. You're also trying to get them onto a specific bait that you're going to be using. The advantage of that, obviously, is it stops other people using the same bait, perhaps, or you can get the fish into an area away from other anglers, a less popular area. And it's very, very successful. Um, usually, I would do it for several weeks before the start of the season, maybe two or three nights a week, building up to uh, almost every night before the season, but cutting the amount of bait down towards the start of the season so they get hungry for it and they're really ready to take your bait. Today, I've just put in half a dozen small pieces of sprat around the area I'm going to be fishing, so the fish are there looking around, quite widespread, so that the fish are looking for the bait, they can smell it and move on to it. Thanks very much, Keith. I think that's very useful information, especially to those new to catfishing. I'll leave you to cast in now and pop into the next swim. We've come a little bit further round the lake now to see what Ron Griffiths is using. Ron, can you explain what methods you're employing today? Yes, sir, I'll just wind in and show you, Simon. Quite simple really. The main line tied to a swivel, 35 pound quicksilver, an O2 Z60 partridge hook, and a small dead roach. Lip hooked, very easy, straightforward. 
everything as simple as possible. On, I know uh, you quite often use live baits on this lake. Can you explain what rig you use? It's quite simple, really, Simon, and I'll show you. There's a small piece of valve rubber attached to a link bead, attached to another small piece of valve rubber, which is then fixed onto, onto the swivel. I'm using a two ounce tri lob lead, which, which is then attached to a 35 pound quicksilver, to which then is attached to a small float stop, a small polystyrene ball, and to a 760 partridge catfish hook. Today I'm using the dead bait to actually show you how I actually use it, but I would lip hook it, bring it through the nostril, and then put on a small piece of rubber band to actually stop the cat, to stop the fish working loose. And there it is. Thanks very much, Ron. Now let's go and see how the last member of our party, Kevin Maddox, is getting on. Hi, Kevin. How are you doing? I'm getting on fine, thanks. I'd like to say I've caught a couple of catfish, but I can't really say that at the moment. Oh, never mind. Perhaps you'll have more luck later. Uh, perhaps you can tell us a little bit about the methods that you're using today. Yeah, tackle-wise, um, I'm using Shimano Twin Power 11-foot, 2-pound test curve rods. They're nice and sort of through action. Um, Shimano latest bait runner 8010s. Seal cast, 11-pound line. Sometimes I use heavier line, but on a water like this where there's no snags, I'm very happy with that size line. Um, Left-hand rod, I'm fishing just under an overhanging tree here with three line squid. Uh, I won't bother to reel it in because we've seen this, those rigs before, but it's uh, a Christ on silkworm hook link, 25 pound hook link, just a swivel, no weight, just straightforward three line in piece of squid. All right, that's on the left hand rod. On the right hand rod, I've got something very special. It's in this box here. I'll show you what's in here. It's from the world's only leech farm, Swansea. Leeches are, are used in Germany quite a lot. They're known as blue teagles, but uh, anglers are just starting to use them in England a bit now. The only problem with these is that uh, they're quite scarce. And there they are. You've got to keep them cool. Best to keep them in the fridge between fishing sessions. The one disadvantage of these is that they're very, very expensive. These cost me £7.50 each. And you can order them from the company by a farm. Just telephone them and they will send you them. The beauty of them is you can reuse them. You can catch several catfish on the same leech. They don't normally come off the hook. They're used for medicinal purposes. Um, when skin grafts are done, they are put on the graft to stop blood clots. So have a think about that next time you're in hospital, you might have a leech put on you. <laughs> anyway, I'll just put them away. And I'll actually show you how I use them. I'll reel in the other rod. It's rather an unusual rig. It's pretty important how you rig these. Just undo the bait runner so we've got some slack line. It looks a bit complicated. Um, what we've got here is just an ordinary running lead on here, stopped by a swivel and bead. Lead, the lead sw slid up there at the moment. And I'm using a nylon hook link. Now that hook link's only 11 pound. On this water, we're fishing for mainly low doubles, and that's a strong enough hook link. If there was big fish in here, I'd be using a, a, a much stronger line, 15, 20 pound line. I've got a poly ball on the eye of the hook here, and that stops the leeches burying into the bottom. It suspends them. Usually I fish about 18 inches off the bottom. Um, you have to have a little bit of tubing up the line here, otherwise the leech goes around that piece of line 
and ties it in, in a bit of a knot. So you have to have a bit of a tube. It's clumsy, but you've got to remember that the catfish is attacking a live bait and it, it's, it's not going to be concerned about bits and pieces. When they take fish, obviously they're bony and they're, they're rough and it doesn't seem to put them off. So that's the best way to fish the leech, is suspended off the bottom, poly ball, bit of tubing. That's a Partridge Z60 catfish hook. It's not been out very long, nice strong hook for catfishing. And that's basically how we fish the, the leeches. There's another type of leech here, which you can get in England from streams and places, called the horse leech. And as far as we know, they're just as good a bait. But um, you, might, you might be lucky, there might be some near you. You can see the difference there in the markings between the two leeches. This one's the horse leech. Same sort of swimming action. The catfish senses that swimming action and homes in on it. But actually, they're very nice to eat as well. Mm. No, seriously, they're not very nice to eat. <laughs> <laughs> Right, I'll just put this back out and um, I'll do my best to catch a catfish today. I'll just flick it out about 20 yards, that will do nicely. The night produced just one fish, which was retained in a catfish tube until This beautifully marked fish was photographed and then was weighed. It recorded 12 pounds 5 ounces, a fish originally stocked two years ago, which had put on over 3 pounds in weight, a really super fish. The fish was caught by Ron Griffiths on a piece of squid relined in the margins. Well, we've come to the end of our session here at Adams Pool. A fairly typical catfish session. There were four of us fishing, but just the one fish caught, that lovely 12 pound five ounce catfish, which Ron caught last night. And I hope through us showing you our methods that we've been using here, that you've picked up a few tips as well. And we're now going to move on to the new catfishery which is run by Leisure Sport at Horton. Well, here we are at Horton, which is our venue for our last fishing expedition for this video. And with me here th this morning is Ian Welsh, Leisure Sports Angling Controller, who's one of the more progressive thinkers in the angling movement, and he's going to tell us a little bit about Leisure Sport and this particular fishery. Ian. This is uh, the boat pool fishery on our Horton complex, which is one of the waters we've just started de developing as a catfish water. The initial stock of catfish went in in February 1992, uh, 20 fish between three and eight pounds. This was followed up in February 1993 by a further 25, 30 fish between eight and 13 pounds, and one very large specimen which we were lucky to get hold of, 26 pounds. And it will be opening in June 1994 as a syndicate of catfish water. It joins Jones Pit, our long established catfish water up at Leighton Buzzard. And as part of our thinking on catfish, we are trying to establish at least one or two different waters of catfish in each season. 
Uh, last close season, for example, we stopped a number of fish into our Yateley complex, um, particularly the match lake and the split lakes there. And they have started coming out this season, which is very nice to see. I certainly think there's a great demand for the species, and unfortunately to date, very few people have been uh, actually catering for that demand. And we think we should be up there at the forefront trying to do exactly that. Thanks very much, Ian. It's certainly very encouraging to see such a large organisation such as Leisure Sport with such a positive attitude to stocking catfish. Tell me, Ian, have you got some advice for some clubs who may be considering stocking catfish in their waters but might be a bit nervous about it because of their predatory reputation? We certainly feel there is no need at all for clubs to be nervous about stocking catfish in their waters. There's certainly no scientific evidence to suggest that catfish are detrimental to a fishery in any way. In fact, uh, we've found quite the reverse on our waters. They're thriving cyprinid fisheries, and the catfish anglers mix very happily with anglers fishing for other species. I think it's important for clubs to realise that catfish are in fact scavengers rather than active predators, and as such, they're not going to have a, a great impact upon the other species present. And uh, we would certainly like to see them in uh, far more waters throughout the country. I think they're a great benefit. Thanks, Ian. And just to pick up on Ian's last point, where he said that catfish are actually beneficial to fisheries, in fact, on many waters on the continent, catfish are specifically stocked in order to perform a scavenging function and are seen as being beneficial, which is actually another plus point for stocking catfish into your waters. A few words of advice on how to approach a new water when fishing for cats. Look for features that may hold fish, particularly in clear water, such as this gravel pit at Horton. These may be obvious features, such as reed beds or feeder streams, or they may be features which are not visible above the surface of the water. For example, gravel bars or weed beds and even sunken trees may provide cover for catfish to hide. When we fished at Horton, Ron Griffiths cast to a deeper area of the lake and was rewarded with this beautiful 11-pounder. When fishing clear waters, action is expected at night. When night fishing, it's essential to be well organised. Make sure you have plenty of room with all of your tackle, such as rods, net and primarily your bait, well to hand. Keep your bait well tucked under your chair out of the way because you don't want to go kicking it over and then you want to have a large unhooking mat ready in case you do catch a fish. You want your bed chair away from the rods, rods well spaced so you can get to either one of them and strike quite clearly. Just nice and simple and your net handily placed in the margins. This unusually mottled fish was caught by Keith. Along with the largest fish of the session, a sleek 13 pounder. This fish had been stocked six months previously and had been die marked on the stomach for recognition. Such marking is normally for growth monitoring. Catfishing is not easy, but with dedication, patience and a little help from the CCG, you could bank a fish such as this beautiful 18-pounder which Keith Lambert caught from Linear Fisheries. The Catfish Conservation Group is open to all, and if you wish to join, an address will be shown at the end of this video. We hope that you've enjoyed watching this video as much as we've enjoyed making it and we look forward to seeing you at one of our meetings soon.